All right, uh, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Um, now, this is just going to be a little response video to a, 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 an Akiyam that I um, actually uh, did actually had a civilized, um, uh, open uh, dialogue with um, just, uh, I believe, around, what is it, just about two weeks ago now, okay? Uh, around two weeks ago. All right, um, if you want to watch the video that we had a dialogue on, I will leave a link to it in the description box down below. Okay, uh, keep in mind it is almost a four hour video, um, but it's, uh, I, I would say it was a, a, a very um, peaceful, you know, uh, um, conversation that we had. You know, there was some times where, you know, we, uh, we got a little louder, you know, and, um, you know, that, that's expected, you know. We're, we're supposed to, you know, uh, uh, do that, man. You know, back in ancient Israel, you know, when the prophets, you know, spoke on the streets, they had they had to be loud, man. All right, so people could, could hear them, man. When they spoke in the marketplaces, you know, they had to, you know, uh, uh, you know, today they would use, you know, the damn microphones, man. <laughs> All right? You know how loud those markets are, man. And I speak from experience, man, because I've sold there before. All right? Um tell you that's damn loud man anyway i digress um so yeah you know if you want to watch the debate me and the, and the the mind of god had it's you know the brother's uh youtube page you know if you want to you know find his page i don't have to leave a link to it just search up the name on youtube um yeah the mind of god uh just search it up in the youtube uh title bar you know and go subscribe to that brother's channel you know overall he's you know i'd say he he is sincere uh, however, there are some uh, flaws that um, I see in his doctrine, which, you know, ag again, you know, uh, he, you know, I've seen a few of his videos that he made in the past week. You know, he, he mentions me um, and, you know, says that I'm an antichrist, which, you know, hey, I, I, I could be an antichrist. I, I could be. I could be. Um, you know, uh, that's not up for me to decide, you know, if I am or not. That's only up to the most high. You could be. Okay. Whoever is watching this video could be an antichrist. Okay, there's millions, there's billions of antichrists, man. There's, well, what is an antichrist? Anybody who don't believe in the Most High. It says that in the book of John. Okay. Um, so the whole point of this video is to get on the whole um, virgin birth. Okay. Now, as I said, I, I said this in his video, and I will say it again. I will admit he did hit me by a few shells. And now I am walking the phlegma, I will admit that, inside joke. <laughs> Shout out to anybody who uh, gets who will make it fun of. Um, there's only about one person who might get that reference. But anyway, um, you know, we're going to, you know, get straight into it, man. Okay, now I'm going to be fair and uh, start with his, um, his argument, okay? You know, but my argument would be that, you know, the scriptures say... Uh, Isaiah 28 and verse 10, for precept must be upon precept here little and there a little. That's how we get the knowledge and the understanding of these scriptures. Okay? Uh, I'm just looking for the book of Matthew. There it is. All right. And keep in mind, if I stutter a little bit and it's locky because I don't have any of this highlighted yet, because I just got this book just a week ago. So, you know, it is what it is. Let's see where I want to start. Um, okay, yeah, so this is his uh, main evidence to support his um, belief. He always uses this scripture, which again, I suppose that's a good argument, because if you read this, you know, just like how the Christians read, they'll just, you know, basically read over it and not really go back and try to digest what it's really talking about, okay? So I'll just read, let's see, 17, 18... 19, 20, 21, we'll read to 24. Okay, anyway, Matthew chapter 7, uh, not chapter 17, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 17, actually verse 18. Now the birth of Yehowashai, which is on this wise, when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man 
and not willing to make her a public example, I want you to remember that, was minded to put her away privately. But when he fall on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. And shall... <laughs> I, I find it funny how somebody <laughs> could read this and say this is talking about a virgin birth, as it even mentions Joseph being the, uh, the husband, just a, a few verses above. But anyway, I digress. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth, forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is Yahweh with us. Let's see. Verse 24, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took upon him his wife or unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Yahawashai. Okay, so so that's his, you know, argument uh, on why, you know, um, this was a, an, a virgin birth. Okay, which I understand, you know, just reading past that without going back and trying to break it down, I can understand why somebody would say that. Okay? However, you have to get an understanding of um, what marriage is according to the Bible and how it was done in Hebrew culture, okay? Now, I want you to notice it says that he, as a matter of fact, let's even read that verse. Uh, Matthew 1, verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Now, what is that talking about? Okay, if you know the scriptures, Back in ancient Israel, you know, and this is this is in the book. If you want to read yourself, a, you can read this in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the twenty-second chapter. Okay. Um, if if you marry a woman, right, and that woman was not a virgin, well, that woman could get stoned to death, man. Okay, so what happened in this situation as Joseph slept with Mary before? They had a marriage ceremony, okay? Because in ancient Israel, the families of the two will, you know, maybe not Joseph's family because he was an older man. And, you know, let me put that finger down. Um, <laughs> anyway, but uh, Mary's parents, right, because she was around 12 or 13, you know, um, when, when she would have married Joseph, all right? And, you know, going by Hebrew culture, usually... Uh, an older man would take a younger woman to be his wife. Usually, but it did not always work that way. But, you know, in this situation, probably, you know, Joseph was probably around 40 years old, and Mary's probably around, um, you know, 13, all right? The, even the biblical scholars, Esau's biblical scholars, would even tell you that Mary could not have been any older than 15, all right? 15 at max, all right? Um... So even this man knows that, hey, you know, <laughs> going by modern belief, you guess what? You had to call the, the Most High, and Joseph, the father of the Most High, his son, you got to call him a pedophile then. Which I know the mind of God, you know, he, he agrees that, you know, yeah, you know, according to the Bible, you know, the age of consent is puberty, because I showed him that in the scriptures. Say, hey, that brother, hey, you learned something new. All right, and that's good. That's good if he can accept that. That's good, because the majority of people can't. Say, hey, that brother's on the sun, then. That brother's absolutely on the sun. Um, let's see. Let's see. Right, let's read verse 18. Now the birth of Yahawashai was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now let's, let's say this. It said the child of the Holy Ghost. Now, with that being said, if you're going to tell me that, um, that a man did not come down and sleep with this woman, 
well, how did this semen get into this, into this woman? Okay, did, 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 did a ghost rape Mary? All right, did, did, a, did a god come down from heaven and lay with this human being? That's fairy tales, man. The, the belief, that's like Hercules, man. All right, and, and these, these, these uh, ancient myths, right, that, you know, beings from another dimension or another planet, you know, so-called other planet, you know, came down to Earth and slept with human beings, man. Same thing with the Nephilim, man. Okay, if you read the scripture, which don't get me wrong, I used to believe this, all right, so I'm guilty of this as well. You know, a uh, majority of people alive right now who believe in the Bible, 90% of them will say they do believe that the fallen, so-called fallen angels came down and slept with human beings. But, but it says in, uh, what is that, Genesis, the sixth chapter, that the sons of God came and married the, 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 uh, the daughters of men. Well, who are the sons of God? If you know the Bible, the sons of God are talking about the Israelites. First of all, angels don't have sex, man. So if angels don't have sex, then how did they come down here and sleep with uh, human beings? That's a false doctrine. Now, I'm not going to deny that there's bones that have been found that have been 20 feet tall. That's true. Well, men back then, they, they could, you know, and this is going back thousands of years ago before the time of Christ as well. You know, back in, you know, the time of Noah and even before then. You know, you could have somebody who might grow to be 20 feet tall. All right? That, that was, you know, common. All right? Just like it was common for some people to live a few hundred years old. Okay? So, you know, that, that, those, I suppose you could call them giants. But, you know, this, this whole, you know, thing about, well, back then you had giants that were, you know, maybe 400 feet tall, man. How the hell can a human being get 400 feet tall? Not even a dinosaur is that tall, man. Which the most high made dinosaurs as well. Um, but you know, the, uh, the thing is, you know, when you're dealing with that, which, you know, I'm not, I don't mean to get too far off topic, you know, cause I am running out of recording space. Um, but you know, yeah, man, you know, I'll believe you if you can show me Two cases of a skeleton that has been found that is 300 to 400 feet tall. You can't do it. They have never found a skeleton that is 400 feet tall. They found some that are even 30 feet tall. Okay? So you could call those giants. But again, you know, um, those could be average human beings, but Okay? Those are not Nephilim. Okay? Um, but anyway, you know, that's a whole other series in itself <laughs> anyway i digress okay so again back in hebrew culture all right or I should say according to hebrew culture because the culture is still alive today you know um as i said if you were to have sex before the um not before the marriage because i know according to the bible sex is uh marriage according to the scriptures uh genesis uh what is it genesis 24 and 67 but um you know, it was looked down upon to sleep with a woman before, um, you know, her parents, you know, basically married her off to you, man. That was looked down upon. So Mary, she could have even been put to death for that, man. So Joseph was like, okay, well, I know what I did was, you know, wrong, but I'm going to put her away privately just so there's not a situation that goes down, man. Okay, and again, you can read about that in uh, uh, Deuteronomy, the uh, 22nd chapter. Okay. Um, anyway, I want to, ooh, I have to get this, all right, because I brought this up to him. I don't have time to read the comment section in this video. Maybe we'll do a follow-up video another day about the comment section battle me and him had. Um, but the thing is, it says this in the, in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, or not Ecclesiastes, this is the book of the Wisdom of Solomon, um, chapter 7. Right? Now, his argument was about this. Well, where does it say this is talking about Jesus? Well, if you, if you read it, it says, No other king have entered into to life any other way. Okay, let's, let's read it first, then I'll break it down. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first, formed, first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was fastened to, to be flesh at a time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with seed, uh, with, with sleep, sloth, yeah, 
And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. And the first voice, <laughs> the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. I was um, nursed in swaddling clothes and that with cares. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into life and the like going out. <laughs> oh, man. That, that was a good scripture right there, man. It said, let, let's read those last two verses again. Verse 5. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into life and all men like going out. But hold on a second. I thought Jesus was the king of the Jews. I thought Jesus was a normal man. He was. He was the king of the Jews, and he was a normal man. Okay? He, he came down and said you know, that he was, he was a mortal man. All right? He, he was an average human being. So he obviously had to have been born by a man. Okay? Hebrews 7.14, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of the tribe of Judah. Now, how did Jesus come out of Judah? If he came from Judah, his father had to be of the tribe of Judah, man. Okay? Yo, know, guys are just being simple, man. And another thing with this brother, man, I mentioned this in another video before, like a few days ago, that, you know, um, whenever I brought up a scripture in the debate and said, see, well, but, but it says right here that Joseph is Jesus' father. Well, you know, his response is, well, I mean, you know, that was just added in there to, you know, to trick you. Now, my argument would be, hold on a second. Who the hell are you to say that all five of these scriptures were added there to trick you, man? That, that could be the case. Well, then how could I not say that, that, that Matthew, the first chapter, was false? Oh, that's going on. Well, who the hell are you to say that, man? That don't really make any sense. What you're doing is you're basically just denying verses that go against your belief. That's what you're doing. You know, they, they claim that we do that. Which, I mean, I clearly just read your your uh, argument first, man. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I'm sure he has a few more verses. I don't know them off the top of my head. I don't got them here. Um, but, you know, for the most part, that's really, you know, when I debated him, for the most part, that was really, you know, the main thing he brought out. I know he brought out something else. don't remember exactly what it was. But he did bring out, of course, Matthew, the first chapter. Okay? Like all of them do. Okay? Now, there's a few things I want to get. Okay, because it even tells you in the Bible, even Mary's mother, or not Mary's mother, I meant to say Jesus' mother, all right, the mother of Jesus, so-called Virgin Mary, even mentioned that Joseph was the father of Jesus. And I'm going to show you that right here. All right, now this brother, oh, well, well, that's, that's not actually, you know, that really isn't true. They just added that there to trick you, to, to you know, uh, uh, yeah, to trick you, okay? That's what that brother believes, which he's going off with that. The scriptures say all things written come from inspiration of the Most High. Okay? Um, Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 and verse, um, what was it, 48, I believe. Um, actually, I'm going to start a little bit above, just so we get an understanding of what's going on. Um... Luke chapter 12 and verse, uh, let's see, verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled, filled with wisdom, and the grace of Yahweh was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And after they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child, Yahawashai, now actually the word there is supposed to be young man. They added child there when they interpreted it from the, uh, the Hebrew to the, to the English, just to point it out real quick. All right, because uh, Jesus, he, he was an adult when he was 12, man. He wasn't no child. If he was a child, then why was he, uh, why did he spend a few days by himself, man, in the temple? That don't make any sense. Um, Terry behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew not of it but they supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey and they saw him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance 
And when they had found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass, it came to pass after three days they found him in the uh, temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. Here, hold on a second. Um, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answered. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father, thy father, let me read that again, thy father and I have saw thee sorrowing. And he answered and said unto them, How is it that you saw after me? Would she know not that I must be about my father's business? Right now, he tried to say, the mind of God tried to say, well, Jesus said that, you know, call, man, call no man upon earth thy father, but only him that is in heaven. Well, you know, I would have to argue with that, or argue with you, not argue with the scriptures, because first of all, does, did the Lord say to, to honor your mother and father? So obviously he, he acknowledged that everyone has a biological father and mother. First of all, the Lord said, if any man does not hate his father nor his mother, he cannot be my disciple. So obviously he acknowledged that everybody had a biological father, Matt. Okay? I have a biological father. Mind of God, you have a biological father, Matt? Yeah, you do. All right? Of course you do. But at the same time, that's still, you know, hey, the most high is still the father of, of, of you know, us all, Matt. Or, you know, Israel, that is. Um... So, so yeah, man, I mean, everybody has a biological father here on earth, okay? Every animal came from a father, man, and a mother, okay? Every animal came from that. Every creature on earth, man, came from the uh, reproduction of a male and a female, okay? It just, it's just, it's, it's, that's true, man. Everything has a father and a mother on earth, Okay? just is it just is real man that's just real life okay um let's see uh, john chapter six and let's see 42 Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, this is the book of John, chapter 6. I'm going to start at verse 41. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Yahawashai, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I come from heaven? Then Yahweh answered them and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man come down, or slaki, no man came to me except the Father which have sent me, draw him, and I will rise, raise him up at the last day. Right, so clearly seeing that, you know, for one, why did Jesus not say to them, Well, you know, I, I was virgin born. Joseph wasn't my father. Why did these Jews, these people who knew the mother and father of Jesus, they even said that in the verse, they knew Joseph and Mary. Okay, did, did they say, is, is, is not this the son of, uh, of, uh, of Joseph and Mary? They, they knew that, man. Everybody knew that, that, that Joseph and Mary were the Lord's father and, and, and mother. Okay, everybody knew that. That was just, you know, something that everybody knew. Okay. Now again, you can disagree. You know, I'm not really concerned. Hey, the scriptures say, "Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind." If you believe what you want, I'm not really concerned. But you know, the point of this, uh, the the argument is when you're dealing with the scriptures, going precept upon precept, the virgin birth get, just getting cut apart, man. Okay. Uh, let's see. I have something else I want to get. This is in the book of Mark. Chapter 
six. See, this might be the last verse I might get. Let me just see what I want to start. All right. This is uh, the book of Mark, chapter 6, and verse 3. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James? and Josie's, and Judah, and Simon. And are not his sisters here with us? And they are offended at him. But hold on a second. This clearly called Jesus the brother of, of, uh, of, his, of his siblings. Now, if he was the brother, for example, you know, I, I, have, I have a brother, right? I'm, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you might have offsprings that, you know, um, also come of your biological you know, mother and father, you know, your brothers and sisters. Um, if, if that's the case, are they, are, not, are they not related to you? All right, if, if you're their brother or sister, you know, are they not related to you in and, and the, the, you know, sense of biologically, by blood? The answer is yes. Okay? The answer is yes. So, Jesus... Had if he was related to these to the people mentioned, right? His brothers and sisters, that means he had to have came from Joseph, man. Okay, because remember the seed, the life force is of a man. Okay, the woman, you know, she doesn't she doesn't have seed, man. All right, a man is the is the one who has the life force, man. Okay, so you know, for example, a woman can't get pregnant without a man. Which I mean, you know, now, now in Babylon, which is America, not the Vatican City, by the way. Um, and we all know who that's directed toward, towards, you know, inside joke. <laughs> oh, and also not Jerusalem, just in case the one brother loving Christian's watching. That, that clown on there, which again, I respect that brother. But I have to, hey, I have to call him out though. All of Jerusalem's Babylon. I don't know if he still teaches that. He changed his doctrine eight times in one year, man. That brother's going off, but I still respect that man, so... You know, hey, I respect that he's still on their teaching. So, you know, even though he's going off, you know, it is what it is, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to read it again. Mark chapter 6 and verse 3. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joses and Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. And Yahweh answered his son to them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Right, so, let's see. Do I get anything else? No, that's it. But the point of the matter is that off of that last pure cut right there, we clearly see that Jesus had to have been born from a man. Okay? A matter of fact, just to prove real quick, that lineage goes by the father's side of the family. I'm going to end this video at 30 minutes, so I got like two minutes left. All right, so I'm going to get one last precept here. This is uh, the book of Numbers. Chapter 1 and verse, uh, let's see. Let's actually start at verse 16. Numbers chapter 1, verse 16. These were the renowned of the congregation, the princes of the tribes of their fathers, the heads of thousands in Israel. Now, if you read up, it was going over basically, it mentioned a whole bunch of names. So this isn't, you know, talk about what's down here. Um, and Joseph, uh, or Slaki, and Moses and Aaron took these men, which are expressed by their names, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees from their families by the house of their fathers 
according to the number of their names, from 20 years old and upwards by their polls. Right now, just a little side note, this does not mean that you're not an adult if you're not 20 years old. If that was the case, well, what about numbers, the eighth chapter says, if you're not 25, you can't work in a priesthood. So that proves you, this has nothing to do with being an adult. You become an adult at puberty. Okay, just to point that out real quick, because I know somebody's going to act simple. All right? But um, that clearly proves he did not say to gather them together by the, the, the their mother's side of the family. All right? But it said by their fathers. Okay? So um, with that being said, I think that was, you know, hey, I, I fired a few shells. Okay? Now, if this brother, you know... Um, sees this video, hey brother, you're absolutely welcome to, uh, you know, use this video in a response, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not the kind of guy who would take your video down for, you know, coming against me using my content, you're absolutely free to do so, alright, I will leave, you know, a link in the description box to the dialogue me and this brother had, if you would like to watch it, I highly recommend you do, um, so yeah, that was just my strike back at this brother, um, so yeah, with that being said, uh, I'm going to say shalom.